Hello and greetings everyone. I hope you all are keeping safe and welcome to another edition of Wild Exposure. I'm Rajiv Velikala and today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite parks in India. Uh, it's a guide to Kaziranga National Park which is located in Assam and this is the land of the rhino. Uh, so firstly just to give you a picture where Assam is located it's completely isolated from the main subcontinent as you can see it's uh, shouldered by a few other states in the northeastern province but uh, the closest countries would be Bangladesh, Bhutan and Myanmar and uh, it's a very unique landscape very lush green uh, it was very cold when we traveled uh, mornings were uh, around 10 degrees sometimes and even the evenings are quite chilly um, and one of the most unique uh, aspects of the park would be that uh, the opening and closing times uh, are very different to usual parks. So I'll start off with that. Uh, so the safari is usually in, in other parts of the world start at around 6 a.m. But here we leave the park from our lodge at around uh, 7.30 and we return back by about 12 and we once again head back into the park by 2 and uh, we finish our safari by 4 4.30 maximum uh, because I was you know quite surprised when I heard the times but what what we realized was that the sun sets at about 5 o'clock so it's uh, the system is built in such a way so the park has three zones which we visited uh, the central zone, the western zone and the eastern zone uh, and each one is unique in its own way um, I think the to see the, the rhinos the best zone would be uh, the western zone and for birds uh, the best is the east and central is great for overall wildlife so this is just another close-up map uh, where Assam is located so the capital city is Guwahati so that's where we usually fly down to and it's a five hour drive to uh, Kaziranga uh, that is the premier park in this region but you have also do have other national parks Kaziranga is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most biodiversity rich areas in India so I'll go through what we can see in detail in the next few slides so this is the land of the rhino and it's the great Indian one horn rhino uh, who we are looking at uh, they are as you can see there are five species of rhino in the world and you get the white and black rhino in Africa uh, the Sumatran and German rhinos in Indonesia and the great Indian rhino in as the name suggests in India as well as a uh, few parks in uh, Nepal as well so the great Indian one horn rhino as his name suggests has one horn and also has a very unique armor plating which is distinct from most of the other rhinos you find and also it's the second largest species after the white rhino it can even go up to three and a half tons and they are one of the most imposing figures you could see uh, in the wilds and uh, this is an adult male uh, rhino walking straight towards us it was quite intimidating seeing this massive animal just coming straight at us so we were not sure whether it would charge or not but as it came really close it swerved to the left and uh, moved off but uh, as you can see uh, they are quite impressive and uh, Kaziranga has over 2000 rhinos uh, in the in their in the park and that's actually two-thirds of the world's uh, Indian rhino population uh, so it's the home of basically the vast majority of the rhinos uh, and uh, it, you, wherever you see you can see rhinos uh, you know grazing in, uh, in, certain, in the grasslands uh, wallowing in the water uh, even in the for, in the forest areas so they are all over the place uh, but the, for me the best uh, location where you can see them up close for photography would be the eastern uh, sorry the western zone uh, but for landscapes and everything else the other zones are nicer so each zone has its own magic so this is the first rhino we spotted uh, in the central zone as we were entering we saw this massive thing 
just having a rest in the in midday uh, usually the rhino is active early morning and in the evening and during the day they are either wallowing in the water or uh, sleeping under the shade of a tree so this is another close up of a male it's looking straight at us uh, this is another this is a female actually um, who was uh, being harassed by uh, one of the males and was trying to get away from it as you can see the armor the the plate in the skin almost looks like uh, armor plating and uh, this rhino uh, wading in the water there's a lot of water and marshes in in the park so you can see rhinos uh, feeding on the water, lush water plants in, and uh, wading in this area they are quite good uh, in swimming as well this is a very young rhino calf um, and it was quite nice to see one up close so this is the back side of uh, the rhino which gives a lot of detail on the armor plating it's almost unreal to know that there's a, a real life animal with such weird uh, body structure it almost looks like a like a cartoon character and uh, this this plating looks almost like it's made out of steel uh, like the knights of old so this is a very exciting scenario where the female uh, was being harassed by this male uh, and to the point where she had had enough and lowered her head and charged at the male and they had a bit of a tussle and it was quite exciting to see and uh, the female kept trying to bite the male and uh, the end result was she managed to chase him away and uh, gave a small bite to the backside as well while he was retreating. Uh, this is when uh, the chase uh, turned towards us. I was actually worried whether these two guys, massive animals, are going to ram into our jeep. But they swerved to the uh, right and they crossed the road and went uh, onto the other side. So it was a very exciting moment uh, to witness. Uh, this is a hog deer. So it's one of the most numerous uh, uh, species you see in the park. Uh, the hog deers are found all over the place and uh, they are much smaller than the spotted deer which we find in Sri Lanka. Uh, here you can see. Uh, so this is a male, male, this is a stag and you get the females who without the antlers and uh, they are found all over the park and they are the primary uh, herbivore species uh, besides the rhino and uh, one unique thing is we uh, notice uh, their alarm call is very similar to the spotted uh, deer you find in Sri Lanka um, and uh, when they when they see a tiger if there's a predator around uh, they let out the alarm call and uh, tiger as I mentioned is uh, also found in uh, Kaziranga and uh, studies have revealed that the, they have one of the highest densities of tigers uh, in India uh, unfortunately due to the tall grass you find in the park it's almost uh, impossible to see one uh, up close we, we got uh, quite uh, close to seeing one there was a tiger in the grass and uh, was trying to cross the road uh, and kept growling at us so we, uh, we realized this is uh, not an animal to be messed with and we you know l uh, let it be and we moved on uh, one of the jeeps was not that lucky and uh, drove too close to this uh, clump of grass and uh, the tiger let out a massive row and uh, two of my clients who were in in the jeep got the shock of their lives uh, but we managed to get off in one piece uh, unfortunately we could not uh, get even a, a visual sighting of uh, any of this uh, uh, majestic cats but um, the park has so much more to offer so this is uh, the swamp deer it's another species of deer found uh, in Kaziranga they are also known as Barasingha in uh, in India uh, these are some females uh, they are best seen in the central zone there is a meadow area just as you enter where there is a large herd of uh, these swamp deer so they are also quite rare and uh, not easily seen in other parts of India. Uh, I think only Kanha National Park uh, uh, is uh, is one of the few places where you can see them. Um, and then, the, of course, you have a lot of elephants. Uh, this is a young tusker which we witnessed. Uh, you get few herds, you get few tuskers. Uh, but even though uh, these animals are so so tall and massive, uh, and they can they disappear within seconds in the tall elephant grass. Uh, so you call them elephant grass because they're even taller than the elephants 
and uh, some of the grass can grow even above 12 feet tall so the, these animals including the rhinos can disappear uh, within seconds and that that clearly explains why it's so hard to see a tiger uh, while on safari the asiatic wild asiatic water buffalo one of the most impressive uh, intimidating uh, and dangerous uh, mammals you can find in kaziranga so they are massive specimens way bigger than uh, the wild buffaloes we find uh, even in sri lanka uh, they say that genetically they are the most purebred of the wild uh, wild buffalo and they are found in this region uh, also in manas national park in kaziranga uh, they are very large animals and have huge sweeping horns uh, which you can see in this big pool and they are quite in intimidating even the females are quite intimidating and they give a threatening look uh, you know when when we stop even if you are in the jeep they give they are quite threatening uh, and defensive so this is a typical scenery you find in uh, the park with so many rhinos grazing uh, if you do a 360 degree turn you might see about a dozen rhinos all over the place so they are quite numerous and at home uh, in this last haven for rhinos uh, this was not uh, the case uh, a few decades ago uh, they were almost on the verge of extinction but thanks to the brave work of the park rangers who have risked their lives for so many years in uh, protecting these animals from poachers as you know the demand for horn uh, in the chinese and asian markets is quite high and sadly they were almost wiped out but uh, it was one of the greatest success stories in conservation when uh, the men and women who were involved in uh, protecting these rhinos and there were several cases where they lost their lives themselves trying to protect the rhinos from poachers and uh, it was great to hear that uh, 2019 there were zero rhinos poached in the park, uh, which was a great achievement for conservation as well. So these are some beautiful landscapes we can see in, in the park. A lot of water, there's uh, several tributaries from the Brahmaputra River, along with the main river at the edge of the park, uh, and also uh, so many waterways, uh, marshes, small lakes, water holes, so a lot of water everywhere and the beautiful foliage some areas have grasslands and open areas and some areas are quite dense and heavily forested so it's, it's quite a contrasting landscape overall you get so many beautiful sceneries and uh, your eyes are so relaxed seeing such amazing diversity of uh, foliage and greenery so this is one of the waterways the dried up waterways uh, where you can actually stop and uh, spot uh, animals so as you can see there's some hog deer uh, grazing as well as two rhinos and uh, these are areas where even tigers are known to cross so it's always great to stop and have a look and we were you know quite fortunate to uh, see several uh, rare species of birds as well when we stopped over this uh, area so there are wooden bridges across these uh, waterways which uh, which are quite uh, uh, nerve-wracking when you see them for the first time but they're quite steady and even the the jeeps we went in were able to go over them so this is uh, the entrance to the central range uh, located in the town we stayed in so moving on uh, kaziranga has one of the most amazing diversity of birds and thanks to our great naturalist and guide nekib we were able to see over 120 species during our trip and the highlight of all of that would be seeing this the great hornbill it's an amazing impressive bird a huge specimen uh, compared to our malabar pied hornbill this is a massive bird and very impressive and one of the greatest uh, you know hornbill species you find the, in the world and uh, one of the highlights of our trip definitely and these are some of the birds we saw the rufous tree pie, the dusky eagle owl, so many species, you know, the starlings, um, the palace eagle, it was in a nest, uh, the blue bearded bee eater, the spotted owlet, uh, 
black neck stalks, uh, gray headed lapwing, and uh, this is the rhesus macaque, another uh, unique mammal you find in uh, Kaziranga. It's actually uh, uh, one of the main primates, uh, like you get the toke macaque in Sri Lanka. Uh, these are found throughout the park. Uh, there are several other types of primates found in Kaziranga. Uh, one of the main uh, highlighted species which a lot of people try to find is uh, the hulok gibbon, uh, the only ape found in India, which is sometimes seen uh, in the buffer zones uh, outside the park. Uh, but unfortunately, though we tried we, on our way back, we could not spot them. And uh, so the safaris are like this. We, this, as you can see, the dense forest along with the grasslands you get huge expanses of forest as well so we are about to enter some a deep area with a lot of massive trees it's very impressive and uh, some of the most amazing forest areas i've seen in uh, my travels and we travel by uh, maruti gypsies uh, this is a photograph of one of the vehicles we went in they are small but very nimble and able to go on any terrain and uh, also we hopped on a boat uh, on the Brahmaputra River and went to find one of the most endangered mammals in the world, the critically endangered Ganges River Dolphin. They are an amazing species of mammals found right near Kaziranga, about an hour's drive. Um, and uh, it's such a pleasing, uh, you know, thing to know that you can see rhinos and dolphins uh, on the same trip and these dolphins are freshwater dolphins so they are very different from the uh, marine dolphins which we are used to um, their eyesight is not very good but they use their sonar abilities to uh, locate fish and uh, they are very fast and very difficult to photograph actually this was uh, the only photograph I managed to get um, uh, though we spent over two hours uh, uh, surrounded by two of two or three i think uh, dolphins they kept coming in uh, in and out of the water uh, but they were so fast that by the time we uh, turn our cameras <laughs> we missed the shot so mostly we just uh, enjoyed it by uh, by our own eyes um, and the amazing thing is this was right next to a massive overhead bridge which they were constructing and the construction workers were busy at work drilling and welding and doing everything right uh, on top of the dolphins and the dolphins paid no heed to this uh, disturbance by men uh, they were happily fishing around uh, and it was a great privilege to see this uh, along with the rhinos uh, in Kaziranga so as you see Assam is one of the greatest places for wildlife as so why Kaziranga is one of the top destinations in India for wildlife. So the number one reason is uh, the game in one park, all the game you can see from elephant to tiger to rhino to wild buffalo to swamp deer to hog deer. So it's an amazing all round park where you get a lot of the big game in one place. Uh, if you're used to India, you would know that uh, some parks have only tigers, but they don't have elephants or any other big game. Uh, the other parks might have elephants, uh, but don't have the tigers or may not have the rhinos. So this is one of the few parks where a lot of big game are found uh, similar to Africa in one place. So it's one of the greatest uh, overall wildlife destinations in the world. Uh, and it's also a very different, beautiful part of India. You get um, lush greenery, uh, very uh, green, lush areas of farming, agriculture, uh, tea. Uh, Assam is very famous for its tea. Uh, they are actually quite, it's a quite uh, a delicious tea. It's very strong and very nice and um, something we enjoyed during our trip. Uh, the culture is very unique. There's a lot of tribal uh, tribal culture there, different tribes, uh, ethnicities. Uh, the people look different and are different from the rest of the uh, country. Uh, the bird life is astounding. Uh, like I said, we saw 120 species in total uh, in a span of four days, uh, which is 
quite amazing. And also the chance of seeing the critically endangered Ganges river dolphin. It's definitely one of the things you should not miss uh, if you are visiting uh, Assam. And uh, great guides. Uh, our naturalist Nekib was outstanding. He was an amazing birding guide. And he knew the birds, the wildlife. Uh, and also he was very much, uh, very good in handling all the jeep drivers and directing the group uh, to get the best sightings possible and a very approachable, knowledgeable young man. So we were great and fortunate enough to get some great guides and great drivers as well. Uh, the lodging was really good. Um, we stayed uh, in a very nice place uh, called Infinity Resort. Uh, it's a very comfortable, great service and very comfortable rooms. And the food, uh, outstanding food all across from the, the lodge we stayed in to the wayside uh, boutiques which we stopped at. Uh, the food was amazing and some of the best I've had in India. So all in all, it's one of the best places I would highly recommend visiting for anyone. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation and learn something about uh, uh, the wide world which we live in. And please leave your comments. Uh, message me if you have any questions. With, uh, I hope you uh, stay tuned for more uh, presentations like this with regards to different other destinations around the world. And thank you so much. And this is Rajiv signing off from Wild Exposure. See you soon.